Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for being with us tonight. What hopefully will be a meaningful night, and undoubtedly, with the words of Hagon Rav Asher Weiss, will be an inspiring night, but it's also a very painful night as we come upon the first Jirat site of Baruch Tzvi Ben Ruvein Nassan, our dear beloved friend and mentor and brother and hero and role model, Rabbi Dr. Brian Galbit. And as I look and I see the family gathered over the course of this Zoom, not only here in America, but I even see from Eretz Yisrael, from other parts of the world, undoubtedly it is the family who continue to feel the most profound pain. But one of Brian's greatest attributes, at least to me, was making every person he met, every person he knew, feel like his family. And that means that to each and every one of us, he was a Yedid Nefesh, he was a soul brother, and his loss, though we mark a year later tonight as his yurt site, the pain barely seems to have dulled at all. We're in the three weeks, the nine days, Shavuot Shechalbo, the cusp of Tishabav, that are engineered in reverse in order to create a sense of grief and emotion and mourning and loss over an Avelis Yishon, over an old Avelis. And yet, though this is the first yurt site, and Bederech HaTeva, the Gemara Chazal say that with the passage of time, a person is designed to forget and to be able to heal, nevertheless, this loss. A loss which is a churban, which has been so devastating to his amazing wife and his most beautiful children, to his extraordinary parents, his amazing siblings and aunts and uncles and cousins, to all of his family and to all of us who felt like his family. A year later, the loss has not dissipated it's not eased at all. The Gemara Rosh Hashanah Daf Yerches tells us, "Misosan shel tzadikin kesreifas beis elokeinu." It is shkula. It is equal to the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. And as we said at the Levaya a year ago, the Beis Hamikdash was a vehicle, an instrument through which Hashem expressed Himself in this world. And the tzadikim, the righteous, they are our contact with the divine. They are how we see and have faith and confidence and know that He is there. And when we lose a tzaddik, when we lose a person who lives with emuna and dveikas, we lose a person whose every breath is in praise of Hashem, who is a walking embodiment of everything Hashem wants from us. That access, that manifestation, that expression of Hashem is gone in this world. It is kisreifas beis elokeinu. It is as devastating as the loss of the beis HaMikdash. And that loss of Brian remains for us a year later so profound and so deeply painful to his family and to all of us. I know looking out at family and dear friends that you feel as I do. These last four months, as globally we've gone through a pandemic, how many times, not in the months or the weeks, but how many times a day do every one of us ask ourselves how badly we need Brian now? Brian's encouragement and Brian's faith and Brian's words. Brian's emuna and Brian's strength. Brian would be looking around and, wow, an opportunity. I get to quarantine with my family. It's amazing. Isn't Hashem amazing? Isn't everything amazing? I'm with my family. And look at the good and look how everything is wonderful. And the some of us have not felt that every moment of every day these four months. It's a harsh reminder of his absence. As we want to reach for that phone to call him, to text him, to hear him and to draw from the contagious energy of Amuna and of Simcha that permeated him all the time. It is nothing short of a churban, a churban, to have lost our dear friend, to have lost our dear role model. The Navi Chabakuk tells us, Tzadik be'emunah so yichyeh, he reduced the totality of Torah to one expression. All of mitzvahs and all of character traits can be captured. Tzadik be'amunaso yichya. The righteous live with their amuna. The acronym of tzadik be'amunaso yichya is tzvi. Baruch tzvi. He was a bracha in our life because he was a tzadik be'amunaso yichya. Because we rode the coattails of his amuna, of his simcha sachayim. It transformed our every day, our every contact. And when we needed him, if we needed advice, if we had a bad day, he was the rock. He was the rock that we leaned on, Sadiq be'emunaso yichya. Chabakuk says it can be reduced to the Pasuk, and Rabbi Akiva says it can be reduced to the Ahavta Lorecha Kamocha. But the Chazanish writes in Amud Abitach on the fourth parak that in fact Torah and mitzvahs can be reduced to a Pasuk in our parsha. 
Vasisa hayashar vehatov. When you don't know what to do in life, just ask yourself, what does Hashem want from me right now? What would give him the greatest nachas ruach? Walk around with that acute awareness, that mindfulness, that presence of mind to always say, what does Hashem want from me right now? How would he want me to react? What would he want me to say? What would he want me to do? How would he want me to behave? The Ramban says, the Torah can't legislate and regulate every single scenario that can come up. So it gives us this overarching Asisa, Yashar Vatov, and the Chazon writes, this Musar intuition that a Jew is born with, the Pintaliyid, the Tzalem Elohim, the spark of God in us, it speaks to us and it tells us this intuition towards godliness, Vasisa Vayashar Vatov, be on the straight and narrow, be a mensch, be a ben Torah, be a loving and a kind and a good and a gracious and a happy and a smiling and a selfless person. And that's how Brian led his life. That's why he was beloved by everyone who knew him. Family, friends, patients, colleagues, chavrusas, rebeim. Beloved by everyone and undoubtedly beloved most of all and welcome to Shemayim. By the Ribbon Shalom himself. Baruch Tzvi, Tzadik Be'amunaso Yechia, V'asisa HaYashar V'atov. He lived a life of Yashar, and he lived a life of Tov, and that's who he was in every given moment. There's a story, I don't think I shared any of the context or writings, because really, if you think that I speak often about Brian, I promise you I'm holding back. I'm holding back, I could speak about as all of you and we could forever. But one time I was playing golf, not all my stories, we spent quality time together other than on the golf course, but that's where you had the greatest conversations. You talked in Torah and you talked in life. We were playing with Jeff Willens. I remember where, and I remember what hole we were on. When one of the uh, people from the golf course drove up in a golf cart to ask, does anyone here have a Volvo SUV? So Brian with his character smile said, yes, I do, I do. So he said, well, we have bad news. A vandal ran through the parking lot and for no reason smashed the windshield of random cars. And unfortunately, yours is one of the cars and your windshield was smashed in. So Brian heard, he absorbed the news. The person pulled away. And Jeff Willens and I looked at Brian wondering what he was going to say next. And he said, no, let's finish the round. It's not going to change anything. Play on. And that was Brian. That was Brian. The simcha, the joy, the happiness, the friendship, the lovely time that we were spending. He didn't want to ruin or have it be ruined. Play on in life. That was his motto, play on. And when we got back, the windshield glass was shattered all over his seats, which meant it was shattered all over the passenger seat that was covered in svarim because everywhere he went, he had the svarim of the dafyomi and the next kabura he was preparing and the learning he was doing with his children. And that story, that episode to me so much, it captures Brian. His faith, his Simcha Sachaim couldn't be broken, even if the windshield was. Play on, carry on in life, no matter what it deals you, and no matter what comes your way. That what the glass shatters on reflects everything about who you are. And his car was filled with his lab coat, and his stethoscope, and his svarim. It's who he was, and it's how he was defined. And he is so sorely and badly missed by us all. When the month of Av comes in, we'll never need to struggle. We who knew Brian Gambit who was Zoha, for us, we'll never need to manufacture tears for Tisha B'Av or for the nine days. Because this year at Sight tonight, the eighth of Av will forever be embedded in our memory. We have two days of Churban. Kla Yisrael marks the ninth of Av. And anyone who knew Brian also marks the 8th of Av. But the Lubavitcher Rebbe says to read and punctuate a little bit differently, which is, when the month of Av comes in, we're lessened, we're diminished, we're deficient, we're at a loss. And yet, what Chazal were telling us is, we may be less, we may be diminished, but we have to do it even when we're mamatin even when we're diminished and deficient and at a loss, even when we're broken by a churban, 
He taught us, Brian, it has to be besimcha. And so tonight, with no further ado, Brian would want nothing more and wouldn't be honored by anything greater than Talmidei Chachamim, Gedola Yisrael, Rashi Yeshiva, and Poskim, who would teach Torah to honor and elevate his memory. Brian admired and grew close with Agon Rav Asher Weiss Shlita, and many friends and family dedicated Rav Asher's Sefer on Amuna, the Minchas Asher and Amuna in Brian's memory, which meant so much to Brian. Rav Asher davened and cared and inquired about Brian's well-being. Sunday, his great Rosh Hashiva from Or Yerushalayim, Rav Sasevsky, will deliver a shir and his personal connection, and I hope everyone will tune in then as well. Obviously, understandably, with the time change, the hour is extraordinarily late in Israel, so Rav Asher recorded and just got to us the recording of a special shir that is devoted to Brian with the beautiful introductory words. So on behalf of his amazing, incredible, and beautiful family, we thank you all for honoring his memory tonight, his first year site, for learning Torah in his memory. We thank Agon Rav Asher Weiss and Sunday Rav Sasevsky. And I want to give a bracha to Adina, to his beautiful children, to the upcoming Simcha, and the Simchas that were just celebrated, to his amazingly strong parents and to the whole family. Hashem should give you nechama, he should give you comfort and consolation. And by seeing how many people are on tonight, but moreover, how many people around the world have been so inspired by his memory, may it give you tremendous, tremendous strength. Undoubtedly, he is looking down with the biggest smile from Shemayim and saying, Hashem, everything is amazing. Privilege for me to dedicate this year Dr. Brian Galbert was an amazing person, an unbelievable person. In many ways, a paragon of a good Jew, an admired doctor, a Talmud Chochem, an unbelievable masmid that loved to learn, and above all, an Ish Chesed, and a tremendous Balmidis. We have so much to learn from Dr. Brian Galbert. One of the most special people I have known and it was a schus to me that his family and his friends dedicated the Mincha Sosha and Amuna Bebetachon in his schus. He was desperately ill, and the Sefer came out, the schusoi, but a Kodesh Bochu took him home. And this is the first yard site. So it's a privilege to dedicate this Shia, the Iluinish Mosri. He should be a Melitz Yosha, be a wonderful family, and a Kodesh Bochu should give them all Arichas Yomim Vishonim, much Nachas, happiness, and Simcha. So it's Mamish Erev Tishabov. These are most difficult and terrible days in the Jewish calendar. The Novi Zechariyahu mentions the four fast days, four days that are dedicated to fast, to mourn, to remember that of all those four days, Tisha B'Av, is first and foremost. This is the terrible day in which we lost the base Migdash twice, Chorban Bayis Rishon and Chorban Bayis Shein. So Tisha B'Av is a full 24-hour fast compared only to Yom Kippurim. Unlike all the others that are only Mialoisa Shachar, let's say Sakhir Chorban, Tisha B'Av is an entire 24-hour cycle. 
And that just indicates that this is the day like no other. So the topic we will be discussing today is Golos and Ulo, Choban Vebinyan, Destruction and Renewal. By Kalal soil, they always come together. Remembrance is something very central in Yiddishkeit. Menatayra, Medivre Nevi'im, Medivre Seifrim. On one hand, we are supposed to remember our days of glory, and that is Sholosh Regolim. Sholosh Regolim, there is Zechel Yetzias Mitzrayim, each of them, Zechel to another stage, another phase of Yetzias Mitzrayim. Pesach, we celebrate leaving Egypt, leaving Eretz Mitzrayim. In Sukkot, we remember the journey, the journey in the desert. Racha Meshemayim that accompanied us along the way. Anane Akavoid Shavuos Mohammed Sinai, the climax of Yetzias Mitzrayim. Zerach always kibitz Yisrael Mitzrayim tabun es rolakim al hahar hanze. So we are to remember our days of glory, but we also remember our days of destruction of Churban. And that is Tekona Sanaviyam, Dalet Sayyimus, or bringing to mind Chorben Beis Amigdash. So Chorben and Binyan are central, central in Yiddishkeit. Min chasoshem moi adim chelik beisim in mem dalet. There's a beautiful siman which deals with two different concepts, which l'cha'ayra, are two opposites. Many tekonas we find in Chazal, which are zeicha l'chorban, amo al amo, the prohibition on shir, on music. Seven different tekonas and sources we find in Shas and in Minhogi Yisrael, which are zeicha l'chorban. In the continuation of that very same siman, I brought eight different sources, so we have a siman, which are Zechel and Midosh, the Imre Emes, the great Gerer Abi, has a great vote. So the Gemara Sukkah says, Tkona Sabyoichen Eben Zakai Shei Lulav, Mitol Bemedina Kol Shiro, Zechel and Midosh. And right after that, Yoim Henef Kula Yosu. Meheriya Bona Beis Amigdash, or the Imre Emes said, When Rabbi Yochel and Ben Zakei made it to Kona Zechel Amigdash, people were broken. And they assumed and they understood. It's a long way off. Obviously, if Rabbi Yochel and Ben Zakei needs to be met at Kona Zechel Amigdash, we're going to have to wait a long time. And that is why Techa for Miyadi was Matak and Yom Henef Koleyosa Maheri Abona Beis Amigdash. Doesn't necessarily mean that we will have to wait that long. Afal Pishi Yisma Meya Im Kolze Achakelo Bechal Yom Shiyav. So on one hand we have Sholosh Golam, on the other hand we have Dalet Soymois. On one hand Zechal Amigdash. On the other hand, Zeicha Lechorban. That is part of our ethos. Many times they say, a Jew never lived the present. Throughout most of our history was too painful, too dreary. The Jew always looked back to his glorious past to derive strength and kayach to move forward while his eyes are always fixed on the horizon, waiting for sunrise, looking forward and hoping to see his magnificent future. Yes, our glorious past and a magnificent future. That is the way the Jew lives. That is the way he traveled through this torturous, painful golos, almost 2,000 years. 
So in Baba Basir Dav Samech, which is the central sugya of Zeicha Lechorban, we find argumentation between some of the Prushim after Chorban Beis Amigdash and the great Chachamim of Israel. So the Prushim said, how could we eat meat when we remember that the meat of the Korbanas were brought on the Mizbeach and how could we drink wine? when we remember Nisu Chayayin every day in the Mishpayach, which is no longer. And the Chachamim responded and he said, so maybe we shouldn't even eat bread because of the Menachis, which were grain and barley. And maybe we can't even drink water because of Nisu Chamayim and Chagas Sukhois. Hello. Lehis Abba Yoisemedai I Efshar. So the Chachamim strike the right balance between mourning, between profound sadness and hoping for the future, hope and faith and simcha. It is only they that could find the right balance. Belayl HaSeder, we remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the focus is on Cherus, but we make a Zecher for the Golos. Talat Kois is a Zecher for Cherus, Matz is a Zecher for Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we sit by his Seva like Bnei Malachim, but we also eat Moror, to remember via Moror was Chayayim. And the meaning is to eat an egg, which is machal avelim. So this is a joyous night, a wonderful night. But we do not forget the goddess and the pain and the suffering. Tishabot, to the contrary, the focus is on avelus. But we do not lose hope. So Tishabot is called the moyed. And that is why we don't say Tachanun. Two of the great Rishonim bring an amazing minhag. Say for Kolboy, Siman Samach Beis. And this minhag is also quoted in Say for Amichtom and Tanas Daflamet at the very end of the Sechet Tanas. The world Chachamim and both the Kolboy and the Michtam quote this minhag in the name of great Gedolim and Chachamim. They were Metakim. Tisha B'Av in the afternoon, a woman could rinse their hair and wash their hair. And that is because Mashiach Tzadkeinu, according to the Messiah, Divrei Chazal, will be born on Tisha B'Av. The Sefer HaMechnum rejects this minog. It's amazing because it goes against the Yisrael of Rechitza. And the Yisrael of Rechitza is the entire 24 hours of Tisha B'Av. But they both quote this minute, which was instituted by great Gedolim. Obviously, they felt that in their time, in their day and age, after all the Tzadus of Golus, that was a minute. In our days, many Sephardim have the minute that the women wash the house, they rinse, they clean the floor. They do what we call an Etzisol sponge on Tisha B'Av. Well, that, that doesn't go against the Nisim that are born. But we once again see from this minute is the balance. Yes, Leila say that it's Kula Cheres. But we do not forget the pain and suffering. Of Galos. Tisha B'Av is Kula Avelos. It is the most horrific day of the year. But we do not lose hope. And we have somewhat a Zechah to Simcha as well on Tisha B'Av, which is called Mimoyed. Just hoping and praying. So I would like to share a word with you, which I said many times, and I say this every year before Tisha B'Av. 
So the Novi Zechariyo is the one that promises a magnificent future. And many ask the question, what does the ratio of this Posik have to do with the Seifa? So the first part of the Posik has many different interpretations. It's an expression of hope. It's a brocha. It's a tefillah, a prayer. It's a prophecy. It's a promise that these terrible days of mourning in the future will ultimately be transformed into days of joy, into festive days. So you will ask, when will that be? And the Navi says, I can't tell you when. I could tell you how. When? It is up to you. You are the ones to determine when it will be. I will tell you how. I'm sure that all, you, all of you are familiar with the Mamar Chazal. Chazal say, every generation that doesn't have the Beis HaMikdash, Ke'ilu, if you would be sitting next to me, if I would be standing in the magnificent Shunan Boca Raton, and I have such fond memories from the Shabbos I spent in your Shunan Boca. It's been years, but I have very fond memories. So if I would be standing in Shul, I would ask you, so what do Chazal say? What's the continuation of the Mama Chazal? And I'm sure all of you, besides those that heard me in the, in the past, would quote, That is what people are accustomed to say. But that is nowhere to be found in Chazal. What we do find in Chazal is far more troubling, far more demanding. It's Yerushalmi in Yom Edavhei, called Dor Shaloi Nivne Beis Amigdash V'yom Av Malan Olav Ki'ilu Hu Hechrivo. It's not just Ki'ilu Chorav V'yom Av Hu Hechrivo. So when we say, called Dor Shaloi Nivne Beis Amigdash V'yom Av Ki'ilu Chorav V'yom Av, it happened. It transpired in our days. That doesn't put direct responsibility on us. But that is not what Chazal say. They do not say, Kilo they say, Maranolov, Kilo Hu Hechrivo. It is you that bear responsibility. So, mother leaves the home just for five minutes and she tells her little children that are playing nicely. I'm just going to the grocery to get some milk. Please take care. She comes home five minutes later. The big, beautiful window is smashed. The flower pot that was on the table is broken into pieces on the floor, and the floor is full of water and broken glass. And as the mother opens the door, all the children together in chorus call a hug. Mommy. The window just broke, and the flower pot fell off the table. Mother says, windows don't break by themselves, and flower pots don't ju just jump off tables. Somebody did it, and I would like to know who that somebody is. So when we say, It happened. It didn't just happen, somebody did it. And Chazal say, we would like to know who that somebody is. So that somebody is me, and you, and each and every one of us. Because kol dor shalom nivne beis amigdash v'yom av maran olav ki'ilu, hu hechrivo. The maharsha 
Chidush Yadod is Pchodes Chesel and Beis makes an interesting comment. 21 days from Shavos Abetamos to Tisha B'Av coincide with this 21 days from Rosh Hashanah to Hashanah Rabba. Both are 21 days. And the significance of 21 days we find in Yerushalmi at the end of Thomas. Makel Shokeid Aniroe. That is the very first posuk in Yermi Yahu. It is the Haftarah that we read in Pashas Matos after Shavosa the Tamus. So the very first Nebua that Yermi Yahu sees is Makel Shokeid. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu explains, Zelach Weiski Shoike Daniel Dvori La Soisai. And the Yushalmi explains, Zaman Chanota of Shkaden, until almonds turn into fruit, takes 21 days. And that is an indicator of 21 days from Shavos of Etamis to Tishabo. So the Marasho goes on to say, there's an other 21 day unit. And that is from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah Rabbah. And just like the days from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah Rabbah are days of tshuva, of judgment, of tefillah, the same, 21 days from Shavos HaVetah, Mr. Tisha B'av. So it is not enough just to mourn. That is not enough. The Rambam, there are days that Abam says in which we all fast because of tragedy that struck our forefathers. And then Abam goes on to explain. The rationale of these fasting is not only mourning. So that Amam explains in these days in which tragedy struck our forefathers, we lost the base of Megdash. It's not only about mourning, it is also about fixing what we broke. Because if Chazal say Malan Orov Kilo Hu Hechrivo, the one that broke needs to fix, the one that destroyed need to rebuild. So every generation bears responsibility. Yes. Malan Orov Kilo Hu Hechrivo, therefore it is upon you to do your utmost to do whatever you can to rebuild the base on Megidus. So what exactly are we supposed to do? What is it that is demanded from us? Let's go back to that very same posuk of the Novi Zechariah. Tzoma Harvi'i v'tzoma Chamishi, tzoma Shvi'i v'tzoma Asiri, Yehu l'beis Yehudo, so what's the connection between the Reisha and the Sefer? So the Navi says, you want to know when that will be. I will tell you how. What does that mean? We need to understand what brought about Chorban Abayis to appreciate and understand how we rebuild the bias. So there are two Gemaras. And the Dorog Daf Pei Aleph and Aleph, and once again on Baba Metziya Daf Pei Haif, as I'll deal with Chorben Bayes in Yishven. Why did we lose the first base of Megdash? And Chazal, once again, quote a Posik in Navi, Nobody knew to explain why did we lose Eretz Yisrael? Why was the Beis Hamikdash destroyed? Chachamim 
Nevi'im, Malachi Ashurings, the sages, the prophets, even the angels from above. Till a Kodesh Baruch Hu revealed the secret, Al Ozva Mesterosi Shalai Baruch Hu Betoiro Techilo. And the Ran, the Doran Peyar of course, the Beni Yoyna, Megillah Storm Shura Beni Yoyna. Obviously, that's the Beni Yoyna, Achosa Nishari Chumi. Could be no other. So the Beni Yoyna says, if they didn't learn, how come nobody knew? Should have been already obvious. It would be evident. How come the sages didn't know that Claudius Ort isn't learning? The Nevi'im, the Malachim. So the Ben Yon explained, it's not that they didn't learn. They didn't cherish Torah. They didn't love Torah. They didn't appreciate what Torah means in the life of every individual, in the life of the community, in the life of the Jewish people. They didn't understand that Torah is the oxygen in our lungs. It is what we breathe. It is what gives us sustenance and hope. A story I related many times, and many, many of you heard it from me. My late father passed away five years ago. And since he passed away, I've told the story many times. My father met my great Rebbe, the Kloysen Bagir Rebbe, first time, second day, Shavuos, 1944 in Auschwitz. My father arrived one day earlier. First day, Shavuos, that very same day, he lost his grandparents, his parents, and five other siblings that went up in smoke in the chimneys in Auschwitz. The great Kloysen Bagir Rebbe came to us was one day later. And at that very same day, he lost his wife and 10 of his 11 children. His Bechor, number 11, died at the end of the war from Typhus. So my father was 18 years old, and he approached the great Rebbe, and he said how happy he is, relatively happy, as happy one could be in Auschwitz a day after he loses his entire family. But he told the Rebbe, he sees it as a privilege that he could get close to him. The Rebbe frowned down on my father and he said, Bocher, the mindset that up is helfen, set the gunish to helfen. Young boy, if you think it's going to do you any good, it ain't going to do you any good. To which my father responded, of course it's going to be doing me good. We could talk in learning. And the Rebbe was surprised. He was taken aback and he said, Bocher, you're in Auschwitz, and you want to talk and learning, to which my father responded, yes, because if we don't talk and learning, how will we prevail? How will we ever make it? How could we survive? We need to talk and learning. And talk and learning they did for 13 months. Talk and learning they did for 40 years. My father, as a young boy, as a young boy, intuitively felt if we won't talk and learning, how will we prevail? And I think that is the way Claudius Sol intuitively felt 2,000 years ago. When Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai finally meets Aspasianus Kesar, and Aspasianus develops a liking, a fondness to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, and he says, make a wish and it will be granted. What is the Yochan and Ben Zakai's request? Ten li yavna v'chachol neho. Be'enei ruchoi, the Yochan and Ben Zakai knows that the house, the base of Midas, will be destroyed. There's no way to salvage the base of Midas. So the Kahuna will lose its relevance. The Nasius will no longer bear any significance. The only guarantee to the future of Klal Yisrael is Yavne v'chachameha. Miyameyem shalav yiseinu v'posku yeshivem miyayim. That's the Gamon Yom Edav Chofchez. That is what kept us going. So my father in Auschwitz, second day she was 1944, Tavshin Dalad, felt in the depth of his heart Rebbe, we got to talk and learning, otherwise 
will never survive. So the days of the Choban, like Baruch Hu Betoiro Tchilo, so the Ben Yoyen explains, it's not that they didn't learn. They lacked the passion and the love of Torah. That is number one. We need to rectify what brought about the Chorma by Yisrael. More learning, more Kviyas Itum Le Torah, more Chizuk Torah, more Simchas Torah, more Shashua Shal Torah, more support for Torah. That is number one. And then we need to try to understand what brought about Chorm Bayez Shaini. And that is explained both in Babli Yom Edaftes and Yerushalmi Yom Edaftes. And Chazal say in the days of Bayez Shaini, they, were, they did learn Torah. And they did love Torah. And they were extremely diligent in the performance of mitzvahs. So why was the base of Migdus destroyed in the Sinas Chinam? That is what destroyed the base of Migdus, Sinas Chinam. So how do we build the bias of Shlishi with Ahavas Chinam? And this scourge of Sinas Chinam is still with us throughout the ages. It is still with us, big time. So in these days of mourning, these 21 tragic days between Shavos of Etamez and Tisha B'av, this is the call of the times and this is our challenge. More Chizaka Torah and more Ahava Sabriyans. We are in the midst of a terrible pandemic. The coronavirus is still with us. In Israel, we have thousands of new people that are falling ill every day, and the numbers are rising. It's not only the numbers of people that are infected. The number of deaths is rising. The number of severely ill patients is rising, patients that are ventilated. And I am very concerned. We are all very concerned. And I know the same is happening in Florida and many other places in North America, many, many Jewish communities. How do we defy the plague? So once again, Talmud Torah. Ksuvah Zavai and Zion, because I'll seek about a terrible plague, an epidemic, that struck in the days of Chazal, in the days of the great Amiroim, and that was a Ra'asan, a certain form of leprosy. Rav Zeir Eloha B'Yosef B'Zikei, Rav Ami V'Rav Asi Rav O'Och L'Beit Zedahi M'Voyo. Rav Eloza kept away, he just distanced himself. It's amazing. We know in modern science, that viruses spread, plague spread, different ways. Sometimes by your pulmonary system, by breathing. Sometimes in your bloodstream, mosquitoes and flies spread malaria. Sometimes by your digestive system. So the Gemara says that the great Ameron didn't eat food that passed their homes. They didn't breathe when the wind was blowing from the towns of Bale Rasan. Rabbi Yochanan said, Ezari Mizvulim, stay away from the flies, from the mosquitoes. And Abelazar just socially distanced himself. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Korech Imohem Osak Betayro. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi learned with those lepers. Taira, Agune Magni, Umatsule Matsle, Boch Hashem, today we have the opportunity to teach Taira with modern technology. We no longer need to do what Rabbi Shua Ben Laden did, putting his own life in jeopardy just to teach Taira. 
We thank you, Kodesh Boch. We have the opportunities to use Maz and modern technology to enhance Talmud Torah. But in time of epidemics, we need to learn more Torah. And the second school is Ahav Esreim and Kavayit Chaveirim. We all remember an other epidemic that struck in the days of Rebbe Kiva and the Gemara tells the story in Yavam Esther Samach based 24,000 scholars, 21,000 Gedolei Torah told me that Rebbe Kiva perished in a short period being Pesach Latzeres. Why? Shaloi Nagu Kavoi Nizeh Nizeh. So this is our challenge, more Torah. Less machlaikas, more ahavasreim, and more kroid chaveirim. So the Talmidim of Rabbi Kiva didn't die because shelo ahavu zeitzeh, but rather shelo nagu kavoin zeitzeh. Maybe they did love each other. Maybe they didn't. But they weren't no yikavid zeitzeh. They didn't couldn't respect each other because we need to respect even those we have difficulty loving. Yes, it is legitimate that we have differences of opinion, but it is totally not legitimate that there is hatred among us. Sinas Chilin destroyed the base of Midas. It is only when we rectify Sinas Chilin that we will be Zaycha to the Binyan Habayas Ashlish. And that is what the Navi says, Saima Raviv, Saima Khamishi, Saima Shri, Saima Siri, Yoda, Bay Soda, Sussan, or the Simple Amaidim Taira. When will that be? Oh, Emes, Emes is Taira. Taira is Emes, and Emes El Taira. Vahashalayim Ahaydo. It is then and only then that we will be Zayr. So I started this year speaking about Golas and Geula. Shalom Shagolam and Dalad Soim, Ezeich al-Achorim v'Ezeich al-Geula. Min hogei semche, even on the terrible day of Tisha B'Av. So let me share with you one other thought and one other remark and one other comment. Many Gashkenaz, we say many Kenais, while we sit on the floor. And before we say the last of the many kinos, we all rise, stand on our feet, and we say, Why do we rise? Why do we say this kino while we stand? Did you ever think of it? Tzireo means labor pain. Yes, the pain of Golas Yisrael and Chor Mabayis is like labor pain. Labor pains are painful. Many women cry out. I don't know exactly how it feels. Only our wives, daughters, moms know. Woe is to the woman that never felt labor pain. It's painful, but this pain brings forth the greatest simcha the world has to offer. Out of this pain comes life, comes the future, our children, our babies, that give us more joy than anything else in the world, are our product are a result of labor pains. So the Mekoinen says, Eli Tzion v'yoreo k'moi isho b'tzireo. B'derech men adrochem, the entire Golos is a mafteach shel go'ulo. Unbelievable pain and suffering that we've been through one generation after the other. Probably the climax being the Holocaust, which was probably the greatest human tragedy in the history of the world. And 
the greatest Jewish tragedy in our history. Yes, this man of home, we lost the base of English, but on the volume of human suffering, of Jewish suffering, probably the Holocaust was even greater than Chum Bayes Hashem or Bayes Shein. Yes, the goddess is painful, painful beyond description. But in the depths of our hearts, we know it's like labor. And one of the Kiva and his friends were walking to Harabais more than 2,000 years ago. It hilo hem boichen ver the Kiva metzachik. Lekach ani metzach. But the Kiva is the one that sees the glorious Geula shining out of the depth of Golos. Oires ha Geula boikim veoile mecheshkas ha Golos. And we believe Elitzion Vioreo Komo Isho Bitzireo. So in two weeks' time, we will read the Haftarah. Ke ish asher yenachamenu imo onoichi menachemchem. The Navi says, like children who are consoled by their mother. Onoichi menachemchem, the Malbim. It says an unbelievable chat. Children are sitting in Shiva, mourning the demise of their mother. And suddenly the mother throws open the door and walks into the room. And she is shocked and she asks her children, what is this about? Why are you sitting on the floor? And the children are shocked even more, speechless, and they say, mother, we're mourning your demise. And the mother says, this is a terrible mistake. Get up, rise, here we are. And they get up and hug and kiss and rejoice. We should be so all together. Lekiyum divrei anovi, tzama ravi v'tzama chamishi, tzayim ashvi v'tzayim ha'asiri, yiu lebeis Yehudo l'sasayin u'lesimcho u'lemoyadim toivim v'meheira v'yomeinu amen. Have a beautiful dish above. Let's hope it'll be l'sasayin u'lesimcho u'lemoyadim toivim.